Okay, so in this video we're going to draw a digraph that represents this table of tasks with their processing times and we have to take their preceding tasks into account. We're using GeoGebra to do this and um, the first thing we're going to do is change the layout that we're going to uh, work with GeoGebra in and if you look all the way on the right hand side of the GeoGebra window there's this little arrow. If I point on it, it gives me this menu and I'm going to choose geometry from the menu. It gets rid of the algebra pane and the axes, and I have just a blank drawing space. And from here, um, I'm going to just go up to the options window in GeoGebra, and I'm going to say labeling, uh, no new objects. I don't want it to start generating objects. I want to name these objects on my own, the points, and I want to have the points with their uh, corresponding times. And then if I go up to the GeoGebra, menu again on, and I click on options. I'm going to change the font size to be a little bit bigger so I can see it. And now as I draw this digraph, I want to first look at the table and say look at these three tasks A, B, and C. A, B, and C have no preceding tasks. If there's no preceding tasks, that means they can be started right away. So I'm going to start the drawing by drawing a vertex called start going to A and then the start vertex will also go to B and the start vertex will also go to C. So to get my arrow, I go to the line tool. I hit the little triangle in the bottom right hand corner to get the, the sub menu. And I want to choose vector. A vector is an arrow between two points. So when I click on that, I'm going to click on the drawing space. And that's my first arrow. And now I'm going to name these points. So I chose my arrow tool. I'm going to two finger click on my first point I'm going to go to Object Properties. I'm going to call this point Start. And I'm going to say Show the Label. And it automatically changed to Caption because I had a caption typed in there. But if it doesn't automatically do it, choose Caption. And then I'm going to close this. And now I can drag Start over here. This is my Start Vertex. And I'm going to name this Vertex A. So I'm going to go to Object Properties. I'm going to type A. Show Label. It goes to Caption. and check the box that says show label, and now we have from start to A. And we'll continue this now. I want to go from start to B, so my next arrow, I'm going to click on my vector tool, I'm going to go from start, and I'm going to name this one B, I'm going to go from start, and I'm going to name this one C. So I grab my arrow tool. Um, the other thing I forgot to do here is A, I want to have the processing time next to it. So let me go back to A, and I'm going to put next to its name parenthesis 2 for 2 units of time. And now I'm going to come down to this point. I'm going to go to Object Properties. I'm going to name it B, parentheses. B requires one unit of time. And then I'll close this. And my third point off of the start vertex, I'm going to name that C. And we see from the table it requires four units of time to process. And I have to hit Show Label. Make sure the check stays in there. Caption, and I can close that. So these are my initial vertices that are connected to start. And now we want to look and say, all right, which tasks require A to be completed before it can go on? So we see that A is in the preceding task column here for vertex E. So after task A is complete, I can draw an arrow from A to vertex E. So I'm going to get my vector. I'm going to go from A. I'm going to create a new vertex. I'm going to call this one E. Go down to Object Properties, Caption, E, Parentheses. The processing time for Task E is five units of time. Make sure I have Show Label checked off, and it says Caption. And we have our uh, Task E in the digraph now. All right, so which of these vertices require B as a preceding task? And we see, well, the preceding task B goes to a task D, which requires one unit of time. So I'll get my vector go from B to D. I'm going to now go to Object Properties. I'm going to call this D with one unit of time. Show Label. And now I'm going to look for anything that requires C as a preceding task. I see that C goes to G. G requires three units of time. And let's name that Vertex.
change the label, and I'm going to reposition some of these labels. Okay, so now there's one vertex left, that's F, and we see that F requires C, D, and E. So I need something that comes from C, from D, and from E. So I'm going to draw my arrow that comes from each of these. So C, D, and E all feed into this vertex. This vertex is F. F requires two units of time. Show the label. And now that we have all of this, if I wanted to, I can extend any of these. I can reposition them. And I see that all of my arrows end at a point. And the only two points that do not have arrows coming out from them, like this point has three arrows coming in, but none coming out. So these points with nothing coming out of them will go to end. This is our end vertex, saying that the project is completed then. And I will connect these together. And I will name this vertex end. So project from start to end has these tasks. And we see that E has a preceding task of A. D has a preceding task of uh, B, we see that F has preceding tasks of E, D, and C, and G has a preceding task of C. So that all matches what we have in our table, and this is considered our die graph for this project. So I can put some text here and say this is the project die graph. And that's it. Now your next step would be to take a screenshot of this and upload it to the Google Forms that asks you to upload a file. This way you can show me that you've completed this task and then you can go on to your uh, assignment afterwards.